Welcome back to Star Wars News Nets. Miguel, thank you for hopping on today. For those of you who haven't like met Miguel before, he's been on Star Wars News Net Live a few times. He pops in here or there. He's one of our lead editors for Star Wars News Net. He is the movie guru, guru as <laughs> you know, he is called around these parts. And so today we're going to have like a really special episode. I know that probably like myself, many Star Wars fans are just craving anything to do with Star Wars movies. We all love the Disney Plus content, and obviously books, comics are always coming out, but there's just something special about a Star Wars film. So today, I was like, let's bring the guru himself, the master of movies in here, Miguel, to talk about kind of the three Star Wars films that are coming up on the docket next. We have Mando and Grogu in 26. The Ray movie, supposedly December 26, and then the Dave Filoni movie at sometime here in the future. We're not exactly sure on that, but we're going to talk about what we can expect, like as far as production times, maybe uh, when we're going to get more casting information. I know we got some interesting tidbits on some Mando casting this last week, and uh, just talk about how this is all going to intersect with different Disney Plus timelines and speculate, you know, a few things on the movies themselves. So I thought this would just be a fun conversation but first miguel how are we doing today what are the vibes um vibes are very good actually yeah thanks for having me oh man i'm i've, I've been and we've been talking about doing this for i yeah. think like a month or two now we're just trying to get yeah the, it's been a while right yeah, timing yeah. down like we wanted to wait till like after may 4th i think because we knew yeah. we we're gonna get like this acolyte trailer all that kind of stuff like let's get past some of the big stuff and it's like we're gonna have probably like a few weeks now where it's pretty chill until the acolyte comes out, probably a new few like TV spots here or there, but a perfect time to talk about star Wars movies, especially because yeah, was... we're about a year out, two years out from when Mando yeah. and Grogu should be releasing in theaters. Yeah. And it, it looks like we even planned it because we just got uh, Mando and Grogu news like a couple of days ago. So the force willed it as yeah. they say. Um, do you, so like this may be interesting. So like, do you celebrate like Mother's Day, something that you and your family like participate in, anything like that? Or like you just kind of like, is that like a, I don't know how like big well, it is, Mother's like, worldwide. Day? Yeah, it's like worldwide. So Mother's Day is, it's different in Spain. In Spain is the first uh, Sunday of May. Okay. All I'm right, not so. sure, like, uh, like for some, I'm not sure how does it work in, 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 how it works in the US because I think like every year it's like a different day for some reason. Like, yes, it's all, it always changes. I could not tell you. I could not tell you about that. So yesterday, this is really sidetracked, but I thought you'd find this story just kind of fascinating. Okay. Finishing up Mother's Day celebration with my girlfriend's family. Little family day. We've been spending the whole day together. I was able to work everyone into agreeing to go see Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes on this day. I couldn't. I can't believe I pulled it off still. <laughs> um, but so we closed the night out with one of her brothers, her mom, and myself getting dinner at this pizza place. We exit the pizza place. And out of the corner of my eye, like we're giving hugs saying, oh, it's good family day. We'll see you later. These two guys are throwing punches at each other, like coming <laughs> right towards us. And I have, to grab, day, come on. And I have to grab my girlfriend, get her out of the way. I get like drilled in the shoulder by these two guys and they go tumbling. And I'm like making sure everyone's OK and watching them throw blows. And one of them grabs like a metal chair and he starts swinging it like at this guy. And then just launches it over like and it hits like the window of the pizza place that we're just in. And I we were just stunned. Like, how is this really how Mother's Day is going to end for all of us? And um, it felt like, you know, we're talking about Star Wars movies and, you know, everything seems to be going great until it doesn't. And that was Mother's Day for us yesterday. I'm just surprised you every time you hop on a, one of these uh, videos, you just have one crazy story to share. I'm just like, I want to live your life as well, you know? My, I feel like my life really isn't like that crazy, but like just <laughs> random things happen. Like I just could not believe it. And this guy gets out of a Jeep and he's built like Dwayne the Rock Johnson. And he just literally just like separates these two guys. And is like, enough. Like, and he just walks back into his Jeep. I'm like, I wouldn't mess with that guy either. But all that Was to he say, working from the pizza place or something? No, he's just an innocent okay. bystander that, you know, had faith in his the size of his biceps so that he wasn't yeah. going to, you know, get picked on here. And then I was like, we need to leave before the cops show up. Like, we don't want to be a part of this. Like, let's get out of here. I got to go ice my shoulder down, you know, things like that. But the good thing is, is I was a hero that yeah. interceded 
And then I'm like, man, if only we had more of the family here to witness that moment, it would have been better. But I'll settle. I'll settle for for what I got. But uh, you were the Jedi of the of the moment. If I was the Jedi of the moment, I would have got hit in the shoulder, though. I've been able to like force yeah. push him away. I was yeah, yeah. Anyway, all that to say, happy Mother's Day to those who still afraid. I hope that uh, you avoided any uh, late night brawls um, out <laughs> there. So the first Star Wars movie that is going to be on the docket is Mandalorian and Grogu. It's pretty well established. It's going to come out in May of 2026, literally just two years away. Like two years yeah. from now, we're going to be gearing up to see this movie in theaters. And of course, we got the news about Sergeant Weaver is supposedly going to be in like this movie. I don't know. Is that first of all, before we get into other things, is that official? Can you like say that you think that's official or is this still something we need to um, keep our eyes on? Well, it's not official because she hasn't he, she hasn't mm -hmm. signed yet. Right. But she's in talks. Like okay. everyone uh, 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 around all, everyone all around is saying that she's mm -hmm. in negotiations, which probably means that you know the, there's like a couple of bullet points left to mm -hmm. uh, sort out in the contract, but it's probably a done deal by now. Like we are we're gonna get into it, but we're just a few weeks supposedly okay. away from away from from production starting. So like. This is probably as close as it gets before mm -hmm. the deal is, is fully signed. Yeah. Okay. So what is for fans who might be unsure of the process with this movie, what is a reasonable expectation? Like we're two years away. What's a reasonable expectation to where they're at right now, just in the process, like in terms of actors seeing scripts, like getting production ready to start? Like what is a reasonable expectation? Um, my best guess is that uh, there's like a 24-7 process happening by now in, in pre-production. So they are probably, so we're assuming, like reasonably assuming that they're going to use the volume a lot. Uh, probably not for the whole thing, but there, there have been some reports that there's going to be shooting outside, even, even outside California as well. Uh, not for the most part, because they're getting like a huge uh, tax credit on, on California shooting. So it's probably going to be the vast majority of the shoot. But uh, there might be something in the UK as well. But let, let, let's stick for California for the moment. I think they're going to shoot, for the most part, uh, in LA and very near LA. Like The, okay. the thought is that uh, Fabro likes to be home. Mm -hmm. And he is like 50-something years old and he doesn't want to be traveling around for six months shooting a right. movie. Like if he wants to go to his favorite restaurant on Friday night, uh, that's where he's going to be. Like he wants to go to the pizza place and watch the yeah. locals duke it out. He, he had, he wants to do that. He wants to, yeah, have he's, that he's probably the guy in between the two of them punching each other, uh, <laughs> separating them, you know, like I, I can see that actually. Okay. But yeah, that, that's, that's like the whole, um, uh, uh, by right now that there's okay. going to be a long uh, shoot in LA in Manhattan Beach which is where they have the the sound stages with the volume and also maybe uh, there's also like they usually do this uh, this train yard at uh, El Segundo mm -hmm. uh, also like near uh, Manhattan Beach and maybe like something like they did in in Mando season 2 where they went out in the in the forest you okay. know in the in the hills and in, in california as well but not for like very far away from la probably mm -hmm. or at and least not is, for so long absolutely so so what does this staying in la they're going to be using the volume a lot what does this mean for the budget of this film are we going to be able to expect that this is going to be like a full-on like feature film in terms of like it's going to be have a major major budget attached to it or are there going to be any limitations in terms of what disney is probably willing to spend here because i i imagine that if they if we had to rank we're gonna be talking about the ray movie we're gonna be talking about the feloni movie it seems like the bulk of the money should probably go to the ray movie to make sure that that's great not that spending more money means a better movie but what does this maybe mean for the budget of mando knowing we're going to be using the volume a lot staying closer to home so this is actually a very interesting question for a couple of reasons. So, uh, well, just let me finish before. So I think um, it, um, they're like prepping a, all of pre-production, which means uh, figuring out the schedules for the actors, signing the actors that they need to sign from the show and uh, figuring, figuring out like who is going to have like guest starring roles. Well, guest starring as in TV, but you know, for for like uh, similar roles in 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 the film, uh, which is the case of of Sigourney Weaver. Uh, 
mm-hmm. and probably a couple more like bigger quote unquote names. And uh, as uh, stepping into the the budget conversation, uh, they're probably uh, doing a lot of uh, visual effects work in advance because mm-hmm. we, the thing with the volume is that they can prep all of the the post uh, production in advance. You know, like they, they switch. It's not that they switch, but they have the post production process like in three stages. So they have prep. Mm-hmm. They have also during filming. They also do something uh, on the day, and they also have. Uh, then visual effects to do uh, in post, which, based on the timeline that it uh, that they're giving out for the movie, it's probably going to be a lengthy post. I'm not sure okay. exactly why. I'm very confounded by the May 26 release date, but uh, we can get into why, that. Why uh, is that? Why is that? Go ahead and elaborate on that. So the the plan right now is. Um, so okay, let, let's get into this. So um, the reports from a few weeks to months ago was that this was going to start shooting in June. Um, uh, it was going either June or July was going to be the summer. Like th- that was the plan that it, this was going to be in the summer. Uh, these reports that we got a few days ago with the uh, Sigourney Weaver uh, uh, being in talks and all that suggested that, well, didn't suggest, but they all mentioned later this year. This it, this can be filming later this year. Okay. Um, I was intrigued about that uh, because I would say like this this report, especially this close to 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 filming, would probably be more accurate. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's also like vague enough that the, it can be either June or you know October. Mm-hmm. I do think that it's going to be June. I, I do think that the, this is like uh, overthinking on my side, and it's going to be June. Or at least, like you know, uh, mid to late June, maybe early July. Um, uh, so um, it's going to be a lengthy shoot. We know we know how actually how many days are going to be filming in California, which is uh, I think close to uh, ninety days. I think yeah, I think ninety was the number. We talked about this on live yeah. a month or two ago because we we heard ninety days. Yeah. So ninety days means like uh, doing the math means like wrapping around October. Mm-hmm. Um, then from October, let's say even November to May twenty six, it's like a year and a half of post, which seems like too much for a two hour feature. Like um, you know, they do. Typically, one year of post for eight episodes of of a uh, Mando season. So that's like a lengthy post production mm-hmm. for uh, what is supposed to be a shorter runtime. You know. Okay. Uh, so I'm intrigued about that. Um, I always thought that there was a chance that they would put this, they would put this movie in December 25, but uh, probably not. Do you think it's possible? Because we have we know that there's like a Mando season four in the works. Do you think it's possible given this lengthy time for post that could there be a chance they're filming things and getting things ready to have a Mando season four that comes out before this movie or a, a special of sorts on the Mandalorian before this movie to get people maybe back interested in the Mandalorian universe? Or do you think they're just going to go cold Turkey from season three few years removed into you know the mando movie in 26 uh is with that I extra time. inclined to think towards the latter okay um i don't think there's gonna be a mando season four for a while okay all right yeah forever i hope depends not on, ever de- depends on how the movie I does that's, i don't know if that's controversial but i kind of hope that we don't see a mando season four Me i do I've, Me too, I've, I've been saying that the way season three was kind of a, a bit of a mess, but the the way they ended it seemed like a perfect way yeah. to end, and then you could segue into this little adventure movie with the two. But exactly, but this actually this is on for uh, talk uh, goes back to the whole budget thing, which I think that this movie already has a big budget, like big big. Um, so remo- removing the whole uh, planning of Mando season mm-hmm. four that there was going to be that there was last year. Right. Um, I would have said that maybe the budget for this movie uh, is at, I don't know, 120, 140, mm-hmm. like no higher than 150. Right. But there was already money spent on Mando season four that I'm sure it's going to be repurposed for this movie. 
and maybe some of the prep that they did for the season is okay. going to be like repurposed uh, for the movie but there was also things that uh, are be are added and mm -hmm. also things that were removed that they spent money on and now they're just gonna like uh, call their um, call their losses right so uh, then there's the issue of um, the actors. So they, I, I don't know exactly how this works, but I imagine they probably have to pay something for the actors because they were supposed to film a TV show and now they're fil filming a movie. So maybe they have to uh, do some accounting math, mm -hmm. uh, accounting magic to to sort out the fact that they were gonna do you know something for TV mm -hmm. for so many weeks and now they're shooting a movie for uh, so many other weeks and mm -hmm. in a different point and all that I imagine there was like uh, that was taken into account uh, this is I, I'm not sure about this like uh, this is just me speculating but right I think it's reasonable to assume that there was probably some overpay on talent because of the shift from. Mm -hmm a season into a movie. Okay. Speaking of talent, this is a perfect way to bring in to talk about Pedro Pascal. Yeah. Obviously we know that at this point from season three, he can do what he's doing for season three anywhere. Yeah. He just is pretty much, he can do his voice anywhere where he's filming. We know that he's got fantastic four, you know, coming up pretty soon. I know and I know that you're the you're the keeper of Pedro Pascal's schedule for reading. Yeah. If anyone's reading Miguel's Sunday in a Galaxy Far Far Away piece, you know he's been locked in on Pedro's schedule for a while. I guess what most people that I talk to about this movie, like the first thing they want to know is, will we see like Pedro Pascal's face yeah. possibly in this movie? Is 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 that going to happen? And the most important way I think to even answer that question is, is he going to be on set? Because if he's not on set, obviously we're not going to see him. But if he's there, like actually there, I feel like that gives more credence to, we might have a scene or two, you know, with him, with his helmet removed. Based on what you know about deep diving into his schedule, do you think it's likely that he'll be on set for any of those 90 days of shooting? Or do you think we're at the point where they've gone a different direction. He's gone a different direction with projects and he's just going to kind of do his voice acting role. And, uh, you know, everyone else is going to be in the suit moving forward. I do think he will be there. I don't think he will be there for long. Mm -hmm. So um, let's assume like for the sake of this argument that this is going to start shooting in mid June. I think uh, June, 19th was the day that was uh, going around. I'm not sure, uh, but fact check me on that, but it, it was around that point. Uh, no, actually, uh, it was a Monday. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe it's 17th. Um, so uh, let's say mid-June, right? Okay. Mid -June. Uh, some Fantastic Four is going up in uh, London in uh, late July. Uh, we know that uh, from a few days ago, actually from the from the Sigourney, Sigourney Weaver uh, report from THR, uh, that he's going to be, uh, well, we're not sure that he's going to be there on uh, late July, but probably he will be, like, he is mm -hmm. one of the four main characters. Yeah, and yeah. even though, like, there are reports of the movie probably being more focused on uh, Sue Storm, like, he is going to be there for, like, 95% of the shoot. Right. So that gives him uh, around four to six weeks to be in California, possibly. Right now he's shooting a movie in New York and uh, he's got like a few weeks uh, vacant in between uh, this movie from uh, Celine Song called Materialists and then uh, Fantastic Four. So I imagine that he's going to do uh, two things. He's going to go up to Vancouver to finish uh, some of the stuff he has to do for The Last of Us Season 2. And he's also going to be uh, at some point in uh, Manhattan Beach. That's okay. that's my that's my best guess. But mm -hmm. again, like this is, uh, I have nothing to back this up other than uh, looking at the schedule mm -hmm. and thinking that, you know, he's probably interested in being on a screen on a Star Wars movie. Like, mm -hmm. um, even taking the whole movie star uh, out of the question, and right. he's going to be all over the marketing, I imagine that he wants to be, like, in a Star Wars movie uh, scene, you know, mm -hmm. like, not just heard. Um, now, there, there's also the argument to be made about the story. Like, we don't know if, if the story 
uh, allows for him to to remove his helmet, and mm. maybe and that's probably the first priority here. It's like uh, they should probably uh, say whether like th this doesn't even depend on Pedro. This depends on, on right. Fabro, right, and Filoni. So uh, assuming he will, uh, he, assuming Dean has the option to take out his helmet. I uh, think it's reasonable to guess that he will be on set for at least a couple of weeks. Okay, that's that's good to know because I think most people still don't realize, despite how many times people will shout at them, that he's not on set. He's not in the suit most yeah, of the time. Yeah, he was. He's he was not the actual one in there, like at all, for season three. In, in season three, he didn't have uh, one day on set because he was in in Canada shooting Last of Us, and they just couldn't figure out. Uh, mm -hmm. Exactly. In the, the time he was like on on a break, they couldn't figure out. Um, and this also goes back to the whole uh, will they shoot in June thing. Like if he's going to be there, uh, like June or early July makes total sense for like him to be there. Like if they're starting in October. I think that's too late for him to be mm. on set because Fantastic Four is probably going to take up the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's also the thing about the UK shoot that supposedly it's going to happen uh, at some point. There were going to be uh, probably a few days in the UK that maybe that's to account for mm -hmm. Pedro being in London and they just uh, move him like you know into the Sheffield Studios, which is where they mm -hmm. shot the Acolyte. I don't know, maybe something like that. But okay. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I my best guess would be that once he starts on Fantastic Four, then that's it for him. Okay. And then last question before we move into the Ray movie, and this is more of a a speculation, hypothetical question. And we I've I've brought this up before on on the lives, but do you think? And this movie comes out 2026. We saw Mando season three, 2023. Be three years basically. Be a long time um, in between you know, Mando season three in this movie. And there's going to yeah. be a lot of Star Wars projects that come out since then. Has... Well, maybe not a lot, but yeah. I, could Acoly I mean, Acolytes, Skeleton yeah. Crew, and Andor season, yeah. you know, two. I mean, we're getting up there. And yeah. do you think it's missed its time? Like, it's like this movie is going to... Like, will, how difficult of a, of a, I guess, a, a project is it for them to get people super excited to come in droves to the theaters for this to make, you know, it is, it's a star Wars movie. They're going to want to make, you know, close to a, a billion dollars for this movie. I mean, if it's a hundred, if they're spending 120, 150, they're going to want to make 800. I feel like the, you know, $800 million, you know, I worldwide. I, I just, I feel like it's weird to assume. I, mean, I, what did, I wonder like what did guardians three make like seven fifty or something. No, like, I, I would say like, 50. It was 50. I just, I have a hard time that. thinking they're going to be, I don't know. I, maybe I'm overestimating um, the number that they would be happy with, but it is a return to theaters for Star Wars. And I just wonder how difficult it might be for them to get people super excited to, you know, sell out tickets for Mando and Grogu that far, you know, removed. So like the question is, do you, do you think it's missed its, its moment for this, for this event? Mm, so I think those are like two different topics um, right. on the, uh let's say let's not even say similar on the, on the ballpark that disney probably estimates for this movie like if i were disney today i would say 600 million and we're happy okay uh happy is in like all right it was worth it we're good yeah. or happy is in like all right fist bumps all around like you know high uh, fives both. everywhere okay both okay. both yeah i mean like you have to to consider that this is a movie that was based on a TV show, not even a right. TV show, a streaming show, right? Okay. So yes. there's already a ceiling on how many people have actually seen this show. Mm -hmm. Like most people are aware of it, but maybe not everyone has seen the show. And that uh, that immediately like sets some expectations for uh, how many people are gonna show up on, mm -hmm. on day one. The only, the only difference I would see in that is just how popular those exactly. characters are without yeah. even people having seen it just because like just anyone you know knows who those characters are yeah. or knows the gist of it and then obviously the amount of I, I live in orlando so i see all the disney stuff all the time but like the amount of just grogu and mando stuff that i see all the time it, it feels a little bit different than just you know a tv show like i could see a lot of people wanting to go see it even if they haven't seen the show if if it's oh it's just a movie we can go you know see in theaters i don't know i just feel like the expectations 
maybe should be a little higher than than just like well it's this tv show as well but Th that is what i'm saying 600 and okay, not 400 yeah. okay perfect perfect like perfect. if if this was just you know uh mid tier like if this if this was a uh, rogue one coming out of under i would have said 450 okay like, that 450 and we're like popping champagne okay uh but yeah because of the there's also like not even like the popularity but like mandalorian is like the flagship show for disney plus all right. around like not, not even star was like the whole service so um there's that to account for and this is probably going to pick up word of mouth as well so uh, mm -hmm. and i imagine there's gonna be like a lot of fan service because faru likes to do that right and you know that that's probably gonna be driving people in but yeah six six fifty and i think disney will be happy but mm -hmm. you have to remember that this number always changes like right. as we get closer to release it they have updated uh, uh estimates for these and mm -hmm. maybe they're higher maybe they're lower depending on, on how it turns out and all mm -hmm. that but in terms of do you think it's missed it's a moment where where yeah, are so you I don't in think that so. argument you don't think, I don't so. think so no okay no I, I do think that it needs to feel uh, special because if this movie comes out in six months uh, I think it's too soon. I think uh, not not for a Star Wars movie because it's been like uh, what uh, twenty four since nineteen uh, mm -hmm. five years, right? Not for a Star Wars movie, but for a Mando movie because we just saw him last year. Mm -hmm. Seeing him like three years after its uh, last season on Disney Plus, I think uh, that will be enough. Okay, that will be enough for people to get hungry again, both for seeing Mando and mm -hmm. also for seeing a Star Wars movie. Okay. Which, by the so way, you that, think it would be yeah. like in a situation where, like, the longer time that we take, it actually can build that uh, that hype and that that you know, like you said, that hunger for it. Versus maybe sometimes it's better to capitalize in the moment. But you think drag, you know, taking the time, taking the space, actually will will benefit it moving forward. Um, I would say that uh, waiting more than uh, three and a half years would be too much. Like I, right. I, 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 it's like a there's a peak there in between like two and four years and whatever you can land in that, right. okay. that's optimal. And anything outside of that, it's probably either too soon or too late. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like this, this always changes. Like uh, just look back at 2019 and you'd mm -hmm. say, I am good with no other Star Wars movie in like seven years. And then one year later, you're like, I need one right now. You right. Know? Like, uh, depends on also Skeleton Crew, whether there's some mm -hmm. ties in there as well. Uh, Ahsoka, that's going to be uh, going up soon. Like, this always changes. There's, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, it, it's difficult to predict this mm -hmm. at this moment, but I would say that it's, uh, it's a good uh, placing for the movie right now. Right. I really, I've, I, I've been saying this for a while. Like, I really hope that this is, and it won't be, it won't be. I really hope it's kind of its own separate, almost one-off like adventure that doesn't tie into everything else going on around Thrawn yeah, and Ahsoka so, yeah. and everything. I, I really hope that it, it's, it's just own like two of them, you know, on their own little adventure without it having to have these grander tie-ins to everything. But I'm, I'm worried that we're going to, it's going to become so before we transition let me ask you one question okay and i imagine that we're gonna you're gonna talk about this on the on the live show on thursday but who do you think sigourney weaver will be playing um i i have no idea i i honestly so i, I i'm trying not to even like i don't want to think about it to be honest like i don't want i i don't want to try to speculate who this person's going to be who that person's going to be because if i'm being honest like who i think it's gonna be it's gonna be something that has to do with something we're familiar with and some sort of like lore type deal and i would rather like i really just want me and brian argued about this for a while last week i don't know if you were listening to the end of it but i i really just want this movie to be completely disconnected from the rest of the Mando verse, pretty much. Yeah. I want this to just, can we just, we had these three seasons building up to these two characters now being like father and son. I really just want it to be about them too. And like, let's just explore those two characters, give them really fitting arcs to kind of have them either right off in the sunset or do whatever. And, and we're good. We, we don't need them anymore for a while. I mean, they can show up as a, like a brief cameo maybe in 
like the Filoni movie or whatever. But I, I kind of want this to to really put a bow on everything. But I, I just don't I don't think that's going to happen. Okay. And also, like um, before we move on, uh, uh, point two, uh, it's the cast. Like we haven't talked about the cast yet. Uh, right. be beyond Pedro, like mm -hmm. uh, I'm surprised we haven't heard about uh, Katie Sackhoff or you know Emily Swallow or mm -hmm. uh, some of these. Things. Obviously, uh, sadly, um, Carl Weathers is gonna not gonna be there. Right. But I imagine that we are going to be hearing about uh, an official announcement in the next few weeks. Mm -hmm. I think they're gonna like uh, just as they posted, you know, uh, Mandalorian and Grogu filming this year and coming out. Uh, soon i think they're also going to post an official announcement on uh, on the main cast which is right. going to be like katie sackhoff right. and, and I, hope, I hope so like i'm i hope so if there's anyone that's going to be kind of along with them for the ride i hope it's bo katan and, and katie sackhoff like it, it makes sense but yeah. I, what i what i am worried about happening is somehow we're going to get deeper into like different jedi things and they're going to have like a cgi luke pop up in there or different things like that like i, I i'm slightly worried about that i hope we don't go that direction do you think do you think there's any chance the the name of this movie changes before it comes out of may or do you think it'll it'll be we're gonna go see a movie and it's gonna say the mandalorian and grogu that's actually a very good question might be a billion dollar question actually <laughs> um i don't know may, may, i didn't love the name at first maybe now i'm just more used to it and mm -hmm. I don't hate it as much, but maybe it's because like we've been using for using it for so long that I just uh, 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 don't care you anymore. Use it. Yeah, maybe there'll be like a subtitle at least with it, like Mandalorian I and Grogu. Like, something. I, I just need something other than Mandalorian and I just I can't. I get it. Like it's what we're here to see. We know exactly what we're going to see. But it's like with Deadpool and Wolverine. Like I just I don't love like the names of movies just being the the names of the characters no just as I, I agree i i just like even beyond that i don't like subtitles like uh, right. for these like to, to give uh the movie some mm -hmm. additional meaning that doesn't really do like mm -hmm. uh I, I would uh if you're gonna do subtitles uh do the mandalorian something mm -hmm. not okay. the Mandalorian and grogu you know right. subtitle that's fair. Uh, that's what I would do, but um, I don't know. Um, it's a good question that uh, I don't think my my gut instinct instinct says no, but uh, maybe. Did you talking about Weaver for a minute? But you meant you asked me like who I thought she was playing. Did you have an yeah. idea or a thought on yeah, that? Yeah. So for some reason, I can just picture her as some elder Mandalorian, right? Mm -hmm. An elder warrior in some clan like the leaders of some clan or mm -hmm. um which i mean uh it's also like who i was picturing uh christopher lloyd would play mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but you know didn't turn out i but still, can't, I can believe, just I, see, I still like, can't believe that episode happened yeah <clears throat> just yeah well, wild uh but i don't know i can <clears throat> just see like her uh like this scruffy and, and someone who has seen like too much you know look right. that she has uh like maybe on a on a on a, um I, I, first of all i think she's gonna be like some warriors of some kind uh, mm -hmm. i don't know if some bounty hunter if uh, uh probably not a jedi but you know something like that mm -hmm. uh and i just think that it's gonna be a mandalorian but you know maybe i'm just uh, missing the whole point and she's gonna be a senator i don't know Okay, so that, that could be interesting. <sighs> she just feels like, and I guess this is the me watching her like in alien movies and everything coming out, yeah. but like I, she's got to be some sort of badass take charge, some action pack, something along with that character. Because even in like Avatar, she plays a scientist, but like we know she's not a scientist to be trifled with. <laughs> like you do not yeah, mess yeah, exactly. with her. So she has to, her whatever character she has is going to like pack a punch, either, yeah. whether it's even a politician, Mando, whatever it is. Yeah, How yeah. important do you think it is that Pedro takes his helmet off in this movie? Just again, like this is a general audience question. Like, do you think that important this movie can do what? fine with that? Important for, um, I guess, the general like audience for to be connected because he's the face of 
the Mandalorian, even though he's not even in the suit, he's still, if you go ask people who Pedro Pascal Mandalorian, like that, that's just, you know, comes in play. And we know that Grogu is obviously going to be a face of this movie just because he's the cute, cuddly character. And personally, and I feel like a lot of people feel this way, the most impactful moments in the show have been when Pedro has yeah. removed the helmet. Like in my favorite episode of the show is um, the one where he takes it off in the Imperial base to, yeah. to scan his face. And then obviously there's the moment when Luke comes and he, and he looks at him. Like, I feel like for this movie, many ways they can write it, but I, it feels as if, if we're trying to match the heights of the show and extend beyond that, we need at least one, moment from Pedro we really get to see him at and to see how great he is as well it's it's a compelling argument especially like thinking back to season one where like the show was fine but mm -hmm. then Pedro took his helmet off at the end and it just added a whole new dimension mm -hmm. so I kind of agree with you there like it's important um uh, like, I just think that this this movie is going to be the equivalent to what season one was for streaming, mm -hmm. right? Uh, this is going to be like that ver uh, that movie, that uh, series' version on the big screen. Okay. So maybe, maybe, maybe to accomplish the same feeling with, uh, with the general movie audience, uh, he's going, he's got to do it. Mm hmm. Maybe I don't know. Uh, it, it, it's, it's an interesting argument because I thought that was the direction that we were going in season three, where yeah, yeah me think, too. Like we would lead up to a point where he would be able to take the helmet yeah. off and do that. But it seems like it was a hard pivot against that, and I wonder if some of that is due to they knew they weren't going to have Pedro on set very much, and yeah. I wonder if they know we're going to have him for a few weeks. We can at least film a few scenes and gear the story towards that. But it would be interesting if we have another hard pivot to where he's, you know, now he's taking the helmet off for different things. But again, we, he's, it's not too unknown for the character. We've seen the character willing to do that. If, if it really, you know, comes down to it. And it's not like if he needs to go redeem himself again, his friend Bo-Katan's chilling over there. Like, man, he can, he can just pop on over again if he needs to. Uh, but I, I do wonder just how important that is for everything. In terms of like marketing for this movie, obviously they have a lot of projects this year that, that are going to get pushed underway. When in 2025, like this movie comes out 2026 of May, at some point in 2025, we're going to get something in the works for this movie. Do you think Celebration 25 is when we might get 15 seconds of something with like... Celebration 25 will get, we'll get a trailer. Uh, maybe yeah. not a public, public one. Uh, but people in the room will get a trailer. Uh, so I'll be able to next April. I'll be able to get on my phone and watch the blurry, uh, confiscated yes. video. Yes. Okay, yes, that's all yeah. I need to know right there. Yeah. Um, and my, 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 I also think that unless they do something before, I also think they will be releasing like at least you know like the the first like big image from the movie. Like, okay. You, you remember like when they started filming like season one and they released the, the, the first shot of uh, Mando mm -hmm. uh, with the with the episode one uh, suit and, and the whole rifle and, yes. and all that. I think there's going to be an equivalent to that. Maybe uh, when they start shooting or okay. maybe uh, by next celebration when they actually start showing mm -hmm. off what they have. Okay, perfect. And in terms of after that, in terms of the public, I mean, Avatar in December 25 seems mm -hmm. like a very good spot for the, like the first main trailer. Right. Now, I mean, I mean, it's perfect. It's a perfect opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, that movie is going to make bank. I mean, <laughs> the people are yeah. going to be in the seats to see that. And so I have two final questions. Number one, uh, will Grogu speak? Obviously, we're, we're mean, so far. It, it's this like, is a fun it, conversation. We're gonna have this conversation several times before. But you know, do you think just gut instinct? Is he gonna actually talk? My first instinct is that this is the perfect time to do it. So if you're gonna do it at some point, like doing it on the big screen, it's like kind of the perfect time. So maybe in the third act, mm -hmm. like it's like a big moment at the end. Yeah, the movie is actually just about. You know, I mean, it's called the Mandalorian to... and Grogu. Yes, it's uh, it's the movie's actually just about Din trying to give him like <laughs> on talking. That's like the whole the whole premise of the movie. Yeah. Um, and then lastly, uh, in terms of like general hype for 
this movie. Um, where are you sitting? Like, where are you sitting right now in terms of not necessarily like a one out of 10, but when you think of the current slate of Star Wars projects, TV movies, like where is this up there on the list for you? Yeah, it's on the lower tier. Lower tier. What, yeah. what would be on the Sorry. higher tier then? Do you have like more, is it more of a shows or are you looking forward to certain movies more? Uh, New Jedi Order and Dawn of the Jedi are the two okay, that I'm perfect. looking forward to the most. Yeah. So I know we, we started the show and we were like, all right, we're going to just come talk about all three movies. But I think we had such a fun time like talking about this one. We're just going to divide this into three parts and we're just okay. going to make three separate episodes. We'll drop one, you know, like one a week here for the next, you know, few weeks, something like that. And so everyone that'll conclude this episode. We're going to talk about um, the Ray movie next. Uh, so this is Mandalorian Grogu. We're breaking it down. Again, like I said, we got the guru, Miguel, with us today. Um, this is last week. We had a nice interview on the YouTube channel with our very own Daniil and talked about his Star Wars collection and what it means to be a collector and talked about his very unique story and passion for Star Wars. Uh, please check that out. And then last week on the live, we, we talked about the Acolyte trailer and Tales of the Jedi. And then we had a nice little argument at the end about Project Necromancer, which uh, since Brian's not here to defend himself, I'll just go ahead and spoil it for everyone. I won that argument. Like, absolutely. Uh, so there you go. Uh, Miguel, thanks for joining. Uh, yeah, thank you. We'll be, we'll be talking about stuff soon. So for Light and Life, everyone, until next time.